Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. Today's episode coming to you at 3.24 p.m. Not too late, not too early. Um, what do I got for you? Nothing really. Hope you're doing well today. I'm doing fine. Not a whole lot new with me. It's been... It's just been like, you know, school, stream, record, sleep. I'm play a little RuneScape. I've been playing the new RuneScape League. Well, it's not really new. I'm like three months late or something like that, but it's still fun. Rector today? Yeah, yesterday's run was the... Uh... Yeah, that run was kind of fun. I, I doubt today's will be as good, but may maybe after a run like yesterday's we'll play Dark Calling today. You never know. I don't know if you could play like Melting Exile Melting. What clan combo do you think would be the most ridiculous if you could play, like, Hellhorned, Exile, Hellhorned? Like, standard plus Exile. I'm just running through them all in my head real quick. It's probably, like... It's, it's probably Melting. It might be it might be Awoken, because Root Seeds is really good, though. Or, honestly, Hellhorn. Being able to have imps and pings for imps is pretty cool. <laughs> anyway. It's an interesting question. Interesting thought. I'm pretty sure there's a mod that would let you do that. Out there. So if you want to mess around with it, you're more than welcome to. You know, what do I want to talk about today? Other than that. Oh, I want to talk about... So I was just going to ask you a question. I don't have a whole lot to tell you. Uh... Vampire Survivors video probably went up yesterday. I uh, I did a little recording for that. It's fun. Game's good. You can keep an eye out for it. Try to get more daily content that is a monster train to you. But uh, today I want to talk about video games as a service. Uh, this is inspired by the fact that Street Fighter VI got an announcement uh, yesterday. I saw a few people on Twitter going, Damn, this is fun. I'm gonna suck when I have to buy this game three times. And... I want to know how you feel about video games as a service. This feels like a bit of a leading question because I feel like you would expect the answer to this question to be bad. However, I don't, maybe it's just because of uh, games that I've played over time, but I don't really feel like it's that big of a deal. I don't think it's bad for games to be presented as a service, you know? It, it's kind of important to, on how they go about it though, because, and when I say games as a service, I mean games where you have to buy like a base game and then updates as well. Or like DLCs, right? I don't really feel like it's that bad, to be honest with you. Because like, as long as the base game provides enough enjoyment to make you go, hmm. Because like, that's how it has been for me with most of these games. It's like, yeah, I, buy, I get like the free trial of Final Fantasy XIV, and then I go, okay, I like this, and then I buy into the rest of the game. That's typically how I interact with them anyway. I think there are times where it doesn't make sense in, like, primarily single-player games, but for online games, I think it makes a lot of sense, and I'm in favor of it, actually, because it gives the developers a reason to keep creating content for games and give games a longer life cycle than they may have otherwise. But your your opinion may differ on that. I don't have enough time to go fully into it, you know? I don't have all the time in the world. This isn't a podcast to flesh out the idea. Anyway. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's a live service for you to like, comment, and subscribe. Ever since I pointed out that I feel like the videos and the intro and the rest of the video is separate, I've been trying to do transitions like that. Anyway, uh, Melting Stygian. This is the classic. This is the OG. And it starts with Molded. This is the OG. This is the original Infinite. Oh, dear. And it starts with two Moldeds? Like, we're one away. That's scary. Soul Sucker, Curse Sap, Molded Moloch, Page Fatal Melting. We'll see. The Infinite is Offering Monument. I'll take a guild marker out the gate. It's Offering Monument plus uh, Reform. It's a combo. I kind of want to play Accumulator. So I will. And that's that. I want this artifact. Is the circle relics? They always bait me. 100%. I'm gonna go Precious Blading. I don't really like Mark of a Champion with a champion that has 15 attack. Maybe he goes up to... He might go up to 20. Wait, what is his attack baseline? 10, actually. 
even worse. I am going to take some damage for this, most likely, but Drag is a strong starter, so maybe not. If you're a Mollusk Mage fan, I request that you do not look. <laughs> Just look away, it'll be easier. Get him, boss. He wins that. I don't quite get the collector, but, you know, I'm filling up the reform pool with stuff that I want to reform. And I'm getting kills for Fatal Melting. Oh, I get the pick, also. Good. I can actually take zero here as a result of all of this. My next draw, two drags, train steward. Better to wait. Rector's not going to win this on his own. He's gonna do his darndest, though. We'll get there with, like, reforms or frozen lances. The boss was pretty low in HP, right? Yeah, 25. I'll draw something, I'm sure. At worst case, I, I have precious plating, right? We played so aggressively here, but it's precious plating. How much health? 24? The guaranteed kill is to bring back a Mollusk Mage. I'm not gonna mess around with the math. I also just play two of these and I don't have to worry about the curse. Makes the most sense to me. Molten Encasement is good. Strong in Harvest Runs. I like, I don't have a ping, but I don't think I need a ping. I'm gonna take Offering Token. Oh my god, no way, no way! Alright. Alright, I'll do it. I'll play it. Multi-strike, show me a sweeper. Okay, that's fine. This is also acceptable. I will take... Probably Nameless Siren here. And we'll just keep an eye out for... Uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for it in can armor too. Okay, so let's let's do the count. It's been a while. If you haven't if you haven't watched for a really long time, I haven't done one of these in a bit. I haven't done these in a while. I used to only really do them on stream. Also, uh, not often do I do. If it's really bad, which I don't think it will be, I will pause the video. So you don't have to watch me play cards over and over. Anyway, the count: three, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow, it's like. We're there. What? We're already there. So the count is... The count is how many spells... Or how, how many cards do I have after playing all of my cards out for the first time? So we need to get rid of, like, three Frozen Lances, and I need a second Offering Monument, and then we need to clear out all the units we can. Then we just infinite, right? I'm gonna go ahead and grab a plus 25 for offering one unit while I'm thinking about it as well. This run's gonna be pretty nuts. Take the... take the faulty loader here. Gives me a fourth turn to get myself situated. Unit draft is fine. I need to pick up... I don't need to, but it's good to pick up some sort of survival for the siren. She will make good use of it. It would be a good run for... Uh, what's it called? Memorial Fund. Got it. It would be a good run for Memorial Fund. Ah, he he. I have, the problem is I have too many units that cost one. Mind you, without this incant nightmare line, or without this infinite line, this deck is awful. Because I just have a bunch of units plus incants. It is pretty rough, but we'll get there. I'm sure of it. Looks right, and then I just like, I'm gonna take one, it's no big deal. God, this deck is so many units in it. I think before I start to clear out these spells, I'm gonna clear out these train stewards. 
I also think that I'm going to look for energy first, maybe, to get me to play through all these units. Oh, she just kills herself, yeah. That checks out. Unfortunately, I don't die. It's a shame. Not even that much. It's like I, I'm super, super safe because of precious plating. We only want to take cards that are uh, extremely necessary right now. Hollow Drippings is actually good because it it just lets me burn it and draw another card, which gives me one free incant through the mid game here. This would be not the worst pickup. And it doesn't affect my incant plan overall. Yeah, this card actually makes a lot of sense when I think it out. These cards are all not good. Tycoon does give me some money. Money is good for the run. Hmm, can't really argue with any of this. I have to think about surviving Palos, though, more than anything else. And Tycoon helps. Yeah, he helps. He'll do his best. If we're lucky, this run will crash and burn, and I won't have to play it. And no, it's, it's fine. I'll have a great time, I'm sure. But if we're lucky, I kind of want to go right, because Pyre remains 85 HP is like, I would never die from that. But I'll go left. Look for like double incants or something. Lightstone casing is okay. Better than melting spout. I don't really respect a melting spout all that much. Need any of this? I'm not gonna take the money in the middle. It's not worth the pack shards. Trap shoot, same thing as hollow drippings. It doesn't really impact me negatively. It impacts my infinite. It is neutral to reaching the infinite. Makes not much of a difference. Alright. The Tycoon's gonna go hang out on the bottom floor. Uh, Rector's gonna get fucking smacked up here. I was thinking maybe I could play like... Okay, let's do something a little weird. Let's do this. you, Talos. Get out of here. Put Offering Monument middle floor, and then I just throw like one unit per turn in front of the Tycoon, and we can draw some other stuff up here. It's gonna be kind of a split action plan. I'm gonna take an Ember Drain if I play Train Steward out. Hmm. I'll leave the Steward in for now. Six damage, not bad. Put the Mollusk Mage, probably put the Mollusk Mage. Two, four, nine. I can do like Drag here, Mollusk Mage here, since I'm gonna play a spell on the middle floor. Mollusk Mage gets to impact it. Again, can't play Train Steward, very sad. Uh, kinda wanna Trap Shoot Talos, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait, because I'll probably draw that again. And it's better to wait until that's relentless. Great Molten Encasement draw. Very good. I'm just gonna let these enemies walk away. Train Steward goes down. I get to play, if I want to, I get to play two Train Stewards here without taking Ember Drain, which is a pretty tempting offer. How am I surviving this fight? That's the question that you gotta ask yourself right now. Because currently it looks like I'm going to die. Right? Like, you see it. I'm sure you see it. Currently it looks like I'm going to do negative damage to Talos and then lose the run. And let's figure it out. I'm going to play Mollusk Mage on the mid floor here. I'm just going to try and sneak some damage in, I guess. It's not much, but in this economy, getting that however much damage I just did down is pretty valuable. 
I have to keep harvesting, right? I have to keep harvesting. And then we hope for a trap shoot draw, I assume. Yeah, good trap shoot. Now, here's the thing. I think it is wrong to do so. Actually, maybe I should just trap shoot. The siren has no... She has no rage. Hold, hold on. Let's sit up and work this one out. Let's take our time here. This doesn't matter, it's 3 damage. Currently the Siren has 10 rage, she does like... Because I could trap shoot the Siren down. That's what we're looking at here. I think I'm going to mold... Like, I'm definitely going to mold back molten in case, but there's no way I don't make this play. And that is very good. I do think I'm better off, especially with this Molten Casement, I'm probably better off sending down the Siren. Oh, I think I will do it. I'm gonna play Frozen Lance. Frozen Lance. Trap Shoot? Yeah, that wins. Wow. I don't think I should have lived this. But, you know what? We take these. Harvest Rector, we take those. Alright. Good stuff, I guess. I don't want Ancient Synergy. Sacrificial Resurrection is actually pretty good for an infinite because for one card you get to ch you just get to chew out like all the dead weights, whatever you want to get rid of with it. I'm down. Unnamed guard for the siren. And like I was saying, I think I want to take energy. I'm going to take energy. Because we have offering monuments, it's not that big of a deal. I think I should go right. Yeah, there's a steel shop later. I'm going to go right. Maybe a little intuitive, but you'll see. Because we need, we need to make these... A uh, mold that's cost zero. And then grab my extra harvest level. And then I need my mold that's at zero. What we do here? Minus one. Plus 20 consumes are also pretty good value. Permafrost is whatever. Minus one on mold it again. That's good. Move consume is not as tempting. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this infusion now. Get it done and out of the way. And that goes on to Nameless Siren. Gives her the survivability she needs on the way up. This should be able to infinite as early as right uh, here, Combat 5. Thanks to Sacrificial Resurrection. I just have to play my cards out correctly. We have removals as well coming up, so I don't need to buy any more. It's fine. This isn't a bad infinite, because assuming that I can get this off the ground by, like, turn three, I can just one-shot the divinity. That's the idea. I have to think about how I win this fight. It's probably going to be Monument, Rector, uh, Siren, if I were to take a guess. Take a little stab at it. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I probably don't want to draw those cards, but it's whatever. Hey, Siren, where are you at? Hey, Nameless Siren, where are you? Any, uh, any sign of her? I could have killed these enemies. I'm gonna... I, I didn't, and I chose not to because I want to... Uh, save in pants. Although I guess two, four, six, eight. Eh, it's whatever. I don't mind. Trap shoot, mollusk mage. I mean, it's probably just a sacrificial resurrection here. Mollusk mage here. Sacrifice those. It's all good. I'm gonna use my. Better to have drag die. I don't know, man. My enhance aren't looking all that great right now, are they? Oh my god, what a turn. 
<laughs> oh dear, that's not very good at all. That's gonna hurt. It's okay, we have precious plating. We have precious plating. It's fine. Well, what the fuck was that? That was criminal. That turn was criminal. I'm just getting crushed. And I'm getting I'm getting rocked by these waves. I gotta say, I'm pretty sure the assistance of draft will mean that I don't die here. But like, I am getting rocked. I wouldn't be surprised if I died, actually. I'm close to being okay. Yo, extremely good sacrificial resurrection. What the heck? Go ahead and mold back. Uh... Great question. I think I'm gonna mold back Wickless Tycoon here. Makes sense. And I could just eat him, but it makes more sense to do it this way, I feel. Does he take four? Oh yeah, makes sense. I'm gonna put the draft down and get 80. Boss is rather an issue, yeah. I mean, not much I can do but play Molten Encasement and hope for the best here. I am dead. What a shame. I I will replay the fight. It's, it's not often that we get a setup like this. I'll replay it. I think that we... Uh, I think we make a few, uh, we make one major change to the game plan here, which is I just play bottom floor instead of top floor. And I let these guys walk up. I died from 106 HP there. Holy moly, man. That's crazy. It took so much damage. The siren is extremely late. And that's what's really problematic. And throw away the frozen lance. Siren is just unbelievably late, though. Four, six, eight. Kill my train steward. I can't do the infinite until uh, after this fight, though, because and also the curse enemies are a problem. Many issues here. Many issues. This is so much damage for me to take. Like holy moly. Uh-huh. Can I even do? Nothing, really. The problem is actually just the 9-2s, right? Like, this this enemy might kill me. If this if I die here, it's like, what can you do, I guess? Siren scales too slowly. I have no good damage spells to answer all of this. It's tough. But if I move this Clip Guardian down, it doesn't get any better. I guess actually it does, because he's not... He's gonna miss out on taking 19. He doesn't resolve because he's gonna be dazed. I think you don't resolve if you're dazed. Because he doesn't take a combat phase. Yeah. Can't attack or action or resolves. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get hit by him eventually. There's just no doubt about that. Maybe I... But, but then I kill the Quill Marksman, right? And then I just save this enemy for later. Makes sense. This turn, I know it's not gonna be good. I'll put my Lost Mage up here. Let's see what he does. This is the downside of trying to play this infinite line, is uh, on the way to the infinite, sometimes you get smoked. Absolutely smoked. This draft does huge work here for me. He kills two. Very good. And unfortunately, I have let this enemy heal. He's gonna do six times twelve, which is... Or no, he's gonna do six times eleven, so I'm gonna take sixty-six from that guy. That's not great. Don't get me wrong. But, 
in replaying in this manner, I am playing towards the boss. Let me think about this for a second. Will I be able to live if I let this Clipped Guardian walk up? I don't think so. But if I Fatal Melting, I get to kill this Absolver right now. Put a drag behind, it's fine. Just don't look, it's gonna hurt. It hurts. But now I hope I can kill this boss. Wow, it's so bad. I got no harvests. Alright, hold tight. We can survive. Stay strong. This is livable. So we're gonna mold back Molten Encasement. Kill our Offering Monument. I'm going to mold... I mean, I have to play Molten Encasement, right? I have to find a way to kill the boss here, right? Not necessarily. I can also kill the top four enemy with Draft, and then maybe there's a hope. Maybe I could have played Draft behind and it would have added enough damage. It's hard to say. Bring back the Offering Monument. There's no reason to do anything other than this. Yeah, alright, no problems. No problems. Ah, uh, misplay. I should have put the I should have put the offering monument mid floor, so I got the five gold. Unlucky. Alright. Yeah, even though I got less harvest, you cut like half of that boss's damage out. I took 81 though. <laughs> even even with information, I took 81. I'm gonna take Sacred Licks, same reason I took the... I'm just gonna take these zero cost consumes to get me to the... Uh, like, to get me some incants, basically. Okay. Train Stewards are definitely the card that I'm going to get rid of. Even though I'm trying to build towards an infinite, they're just extremely in my way. I'm going to duplicate Offering Monument. I should maybe get rid of the... Probably get rid of the Tycoon, actually. He's a bit of an issue. I won't be able to infinite here, but if we live this fight, if I live through this battle, I'll have enough money. I, I think that it's fine. If I can survive this, we will have... Oh, God. <laughs> Harvesters of Death, Crystal Cloak. All right. Okay, all right, all right. I only have Frozen Lance, but Frozen Lance is important. Alright, okay, alright, alright. Is winnable with this turn one, I think. I'm going to play bottom four, I'm just gonna slap it right on down here. I'm gonna meet the enemies head on. I think it makes sense, anyway. Our goal is to reach the infinite. Let me grab that collector. Our goal is to do an infinite on this fight. I'm going to press N turn. And I'm not going to play anything. I would like to not take 10. Uh, many, 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 many ideas here. Let's, let's do some hypothesizing about this one. But first and foremost, I'm going to play Hollow Dragons. I think that's a given. Second of all, I'm going to play Offering Monument number two. I don't know if thing does three. This enemy lives drag drag at like no HP, but I can sacrificial resurrection him. I think the best play here is going to be the trap shoot days the 15 2. Sacrificial resurrection brings back a new draft to kill the top four tank for me. Now I am gonna feed a little bit of armor potentially. This is all fine. I'm just playing out units here. This is all okay. There is nothing particularly bad yet. Okay, I want to get rid of dead weight. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. All right. I'm just doing a little bit of thinking about this one. We're really close. I know it might not look it, but we are rather close to being there. I need to live, like... I need to live, like... It's just, it's tough because I don't have a lot of time left, right? This is the second to last wave. Once, the, if this fight were two more waves, we would have no problems, I think. Okay, I'm gonna make the decision. I'm gonna put Fatal Melting down here, like so. Go ahead and play Molded. Give me the draft back, actually, and he can go fuck some shit up mid floor. That's my boy right there. Okay. I believe the play needs to be just dump units top floor and press end turn. And I believe this is the play. And now we basically just have to get there. Doesn't matter. Ooh, this matters though. Mm hmm. This matters. Bear with me, I'm gonna be taking. I'm, I'm just. There's a lot of calculating that I'm just going to be doing here. I believe this draft could do enough. Oh my god, he lives. It's okay, I'm just gonna take the hit. Nothing you can do about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe if I press... The Frozen Lance here, yeah. It's fine. Okay, and now... This is where we put it all together. You ready? This is this is where we put it all together. I have played the entire fight for this turn. How do we do it? Let's let's surmise. I think it is doable. I need to play one molded. Bring back the offering monument. Okay. You play the Offering Monument. I think I never draw positive here is the problem. I might be able to just kill the boss, right? Okay. I'm pretty sure you play... Wait, why does it have 50 HP? Oh my god, because it died! Oh, because it died. That's really weird. Because they changed how Offering Monument works. Oh, yeah. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Wow, that changes a lot about how this operates, I think. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill the boss. It's no big deal. The thing that's... Or also Sacrificial Resurrection. I don't know, man. I don't know. Don't worry about it, it's fine. I'm gonna just incant a bunch, I guess. I'm not entirely sure anymore. This is this is different. This is a lot different than what I remember it being. Because uh, we win. Okay, we win. I'm just gonna take my end turn. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, whatever. Cool. Right on. I won that fight. This is a lot of thinking. I'm gonna skip all of these now. I mean, you see it now. The later fights are going to be easier. I'm going to continue to take these zero-cost consumes. So, what's different here? This is actually really important. They, they made a change that I didn't think about. On release of this game, when you used effects that were worded how this is, minus five and then the heart, it meant minus five max HP. And 
when you went from 65 to 60, if you were at 50 HP, it would not take current HP. But people, I believe, complained in the Monster Train Discord about this, and they changed it so that all of these effects are now minus max HP and current HP. So basically what this means is before when an offering monument would die or like it would tank but then you would reach the point where you just encamp through your whole deck and it would die now any damage that it takes is effectively more max hp on the reform which makes things strange uh, perhaps i have already learned this as well perhaps this is something that has come up before and i have forgotten already i am not sure i could not tell you However, what I can tell you is Sacrificial Resurrection has single-handedly saved this run. We're here right now because Sacrificial Resurrection has made drafts to kill enemies for me. Thank you, Sacrificial Resurrection. Very cool. I don't think I want to give the Offering Monuments more HP. I'm gonna reroll. Incan Armor 2 is okay. And we're gonna go ahead and say goodbye, Wickless Tycoon. Thank you for the money. And I'm going to remove one Frozen Lance. We got multiple temples. I'll keep an eye out for Purge Stones now. There was one in the last one that I skipped because I was afraid. I will take... Uh, I will not take plus 10 piercing. I'm going to give Cursefell some respect today. But I believe I should just do an infinite. What I'm, my, my general philosophy from for the rest of this run is going to be do the infinite to a point where it is no longer reasonable to assume that I would die, and then just press end turn. Not very good. <laughs> that's not that's not very good at all. Okay. Uh. Door, door. I'm gonna continue to play bottom floor. I'm just gonna drop that other offering monument for now. I don't need it. This run has started to feel like perhaps I should be taking space as well. I have begun to have a bit of a feeling. I'm going to crystalline seeds that way so I don't take damage. I think it's fine to say goodbye to Fatal Melting here for a Sacrificial Resurrection. Got rid of a dead weight as well, which is nice. And the draft goes in the Reform Pool, which is also nice. Uh, it's all good. I think that will be fine here. Frig you, fell. Don't ever moan at me again. Frozen lands, frozen lands. I was actually expecting to draw Molded in there, but that's okay. It's not really a big deal. Enemies walking up right now because of the drafts. I actually have a bit of a safety net for this. Fine. Play one frozen lands and then we can bring him back. And bring back draft as well. Run does have a case to be made for... I have order, by the way. Run has a case to be made for me going after a space take instead of a draw take here. Probably consider it. Not gonna play this offering monument out. We're getting there, right? We, we are, like, we're reaching the maintenance point where it's like, okay, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. Soon we will be to where we are approaching. Taking a second space also lets me play a second offering monument, which is decent. Makes life a little easier. Ah, sacrificial resurrection as usual. Just another draft. Somewhat similar to yesterday's run. Makes sense. Again, just don't really want to... Don't really want to play this offering monument yet. Okay, so there's a bit of an issue. That is brewing on the on the horizon here. I don't have a way to kill this yet. Technically I do. I could sacrifice it and then reform it, but it's the problem is it doesn't run out of HP. And so I'm gonna have turns like this, you see. 
But it's like, I, I, and I guess it's fine, because I'm just going to reform a bunch of drafts. And like, I guess it's not that big of a deal. I'm just going to use it to bring back these Sacrificial Resurrection drafts and then steamroll a wave. Sort of. Bring back the team. And if I want to get rid of these Frozen Lances, and the deck is now not many cards at all, I gotta say. I'm up here. Oh, that works differently than I expected. But I can I can do this. Oh, it makes a draft. Hmm. But the problem is I'm just going to run myself out of uh, space in my train and hand on these drafts and like these units that I'm reforming. I fear. Throw away sacrificial resurrection. I can that's like I can never get rid of it, you know. But I do have to draw a. I guess I could just sacrifice these. And just like a compounding effect, basically. Kind of strange. So you'll get a feel for it. Hold on. Because then we come up here, we play this, and bring back another dragon. And then on this turn, I just eat them all up and they condense down into a singular draft. And then all of this, and I don't even get to do the infinite. <laughs> uh, all of that, and I don't even get anything out of it. Alright. That's pretty funny. Or sad depending on how you want to view it. Mm -hmm. Offering Monument. Molded. Offering Monument. I got fucked here by the curses, I think. Maybe not, because of this one having an extra draw, right? Usually Offering Monuments are draw neutral, but this one is uh, draw positive by one, because it died. Oh, I had an ultimate penance? Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. This is gonna be a long episode. I should have just died and then reset. This is gonna take us a while. Okay. Oh wait, it's over. She's dead. Now what I could have done is I could have kept the Wickless Tycoon in and I could have generated myself like 2,000 gold in one of these turns. I didn't want to. I'm not playing Hollowed Halls. I'm down for space. Don't worry, only two more combats. 43 minutes already. Ooh, buddy. It's gonna be a long one. I'm gonna go right. I gave the Siren in can armor too, yeah. I'm going to throw away... Frozen Lands and a drag. I do need to make sure I take enough pack shards for the remainder of the run. Intrinsic? Not that interesting. I think this is a great case to use my pack shards as removals. Just do like a drag self-infuse for 25 pack shards. Because what else do I want? And we can do like intrinsic Owl drippings, and then I'll just throw it away. Oh, that makes sense. Could have held out for another multi strike siren, alas. Too bad, I didn't. I'm gonna take another 25. I can throw off this drag. I'm hesitant to throw away the molten encasement because I think it has some use. I think it has some use. Throw away one more frozen lens. We should be alright. The goal here is to reach a point where I can do the infinite on turn one and then one shot the divinity without having to play out the fight. More curses? Oh. I, I feel like I should not take the plus eight. Infinite or not. Like, I'm gonna get hit. Although I guess the infinite gives Rector infinite HP. 
And yeah, I can probably do this. I just have to play top floor, I guess. If I play bottom floor here, I'm gonna get smoked by this gilded wing. I'm just gonna get absolutely rolled. Top floor it is. Main siren. Drag ends everything. Here's a here's a big play actually. Put the drag up here and then send him down. I don't want to just play him down here because I don't want him to pop the days. Or sorry, the melee weakness. Another offering monument. Still fine. Good bit of cycling. Here. I'll grieve. I can afford it. The curses start coming in fast and furious here, though. There's draft again. Stuck in traffic. Like traffic, but draft. You know? No? Okay. I understand. It's a bit of a tough one. Okay, I mean, this is a really good hand to Sacrificial Resurrection. Losing Offering token kind of sucks, but getting rid of all of that is good. Mmm, bit of an issue though, isn't it? Not really, I guess. This is 100, I'm gonna take a little, I'm gonna take like, what, 18, it looks like? I'm gonna take 18. I, oh, I should put the draft in front, and then I would get a little more damage. How foolish. I think I would have actually killed, alas. All right, so on this turn, I have to make this make sense, is where we are. You play molded, you bring back whatever, it doesn't really matter. Play offering monument. Fatal Melting's too expensive. I needed to go to some magic shops to make this shit cost less. Offering Monument back. And here's the play. We play Offering Monument, and you just Sacrificial Resurrection. And that'll give me, yeah, both Moldeds. Bring back Offering Monument. Play it. Bring back... It doesn't really matter. Take the draft, I guess. I think this is the infinite, but I'm just gonna keep reforming random cards until I'm done, and then I can condense all of the cards that I bring back into a singular sacrificial resurrection to... that would have been bad. I can condense everything I bring back into one sacrificial resurrection to make a big draft to run the enemies over. That's the idea right now. How strange. How very strange. Oh wait, I think I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a mistake. It's okay. Actually, it's not okay. Hmm. I mean, it is okay, but uh, it could be better. It's more accurate. Go draft here. And as long as there's. I think this is right. Draw five, the curses don't matter. They are of no consequence. Bring back an offering monument. Play it. Perform. Here you are. This is the infinite. This is the infinite. Right here. So my health bar is of no consequence. Rector will never die. And so... The goal here is going to be, unfortunately, to take Nameless Siren up to... Uh, 290, I believe. So that she kills the Steel Wings and the Gilded Wings. And then the dregs that are spawned kill the backline. I could probably get away with stopping a little sooner. Also, uh, I'm not at risk of losing this infinite, so I can just stop when I see the X's and then keep playing 
uh, after the fact. I can just do this, right? I can end my turn, and then if I don't see X's, we can play more cards. Yeah, like this, I play more cards. However, I believe I can get away with just playing the drafts. This is 100% everything I'm going to do from here on is not about optimizing the rest of this run, it's about optimizing my own sanity. I can hypothetically go forever. No, not even hypothetically, I can go forever. This is a, this is a true infinite. I've done pseudo-infinites before, this is a true infinite. However, in for, for the sake of the, the video not being an hour and a half, I'm going to stop when I think I have a victory in the combat, which is probably when Rector has 708 HP. Man, once again I put myself in a position where killing the divinity is going to suck. Haven't I? At least it's not a subsuming blade infinite. I don't think I want these. Either. I need to see a magic shop today. The removals are also nice. Idle melting is okay. Let's see what our curse or our relics are. Drop cage is meaningless. Tethysis scales is meaningless. Banners is meaningless. Uh, resin block is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, resin block's kind of cool. Sure, you can take that. Check the temple first before I make any other choices here. Urge stone, cool. I was gonna, if there was a plus 10 piercing, I would put it on fatal melting, but there is not. So, I could make fatal melting cause zero. You know, let's purge out frozen lanes, actually. Change my mind. I could do this. Double stack, pretty meaningless. Actually, not bad on trap shoot to daze the divinity, but I think it's not that good. Take Fatal Melting to zero. I don't really need to give it hold over, but I could. The rest of the money goes to removing cards that are not good for the deck. What's not good for the deck? Dreg. Uh, what else? Mm, probably Dreg again, to be honest with you. Probably just Dreg again. And there you go. Oh yeah, I have two more removals. I mean, with Dreg's gone... It has to come down to consume spells, right? I think off- oh, Molten Encasement should go. Yeah, Molten Encasement can get out of here for sure. And I guess it's consumes. It's probably Frozen Lance with consume, because it costs one and the other consumes are zero costs. Gonna be my hypothesis and conclusion here. Let's do it. All right. Don't want any of that. Let's do it. So in this run, I believe again our goal is going to be play and then like play everything out, draw everything, kill Sarah immediately. As fast as we can. It shouldn't take too long. Is my feeling. I'll go ahead and eat the dead weight when I can. Seems fine. I put both the Offering Monuments down and then I just cycle the deck into the infinite, like, this turn. Reasonably speaking, just do the infinite now. Yeah. I do have a dead weight still, but it's okay. Molden brings back the draft, get the Sacred Weights out. Doesn't really matter, I just have to get them killed. And you go one molded. Yeah. How long is this gonna take? Oh, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> oh, it's gonna take a while. All right. So again, I think that the the line here, because on the divinity, I'm going to have to actually uh, build up and kill the divinity in a single turn. I believe the line here is going to be to reach a point where I am stable and not going to lose the fight ever, and then just end my turn. And that's gonna be actually pretty easy to reach. It's just gonna be when the Siren has enough damage, which is probably, I wanna get her to like 300-ish, I imagine. 
Why do I keep doing this? Like, tell me. Why do I put myself through this? I could have just died. I had the out. I had the out. The game gave me the out. I died in combat 4. And I was like, no, no, it's cool. We can do this infinite. It'll be fun. It's not fun. It sucks. <laughs> it's terrible. This one will actually only take like five minutes to kill Seraph, actually. Now that I'm looking at it again. It shouldn't take that long. Because the resin block actually cuts a lot of time off. Instead of gaining 5 per round, the Offering Monuments are gaining 15 per round, which is significantly more. It is 3 times as much. I've only done what Herschel could. Shut up. Don't talk to me, dog. 240. So I have... Well, let's, let's, do, let's try to do some rough math, right? But where am I going to be at 500? 500 is... 250 rage, which is 125 casts. Is that right? Like, is that right? I guess so. No, that's definitely wrong. 250 rage. I mean, it's 100, 125 total casts, I guess, right? Which I'm a little bit away from. I'm like almost halfway there. But. So that's about. Let's say that's about 50 casts away. That's gonna add. 750, I think? 50, yeah, I think that's 750 to the offering monuments from here. So I think in about. About 50 casts, Seraph should be dead. Because. Where are we at? We're at 1100. I'll go all the way here, it's fine. It's great for the score. Plus I can always sneak in Fatal Melting. From time to time. I think I could actually do... Again, I want to test a quick hypothesis here, if you don't mind. And then I bring back the other one. This doesn't drop my infinite, does it? No, it does, okay. Because I, I am now... Yeah, I'm going to have this turn. Right? Yeah. That's alright. It was worth a look. I wanted to see how it would go. Oh yeah, I can also just play Fatal Melting to kill everything now, too. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and kill Seraph now. I'm gonna follow Seraph around and play Fatal Meltings at him, and then reform Offering Monuments at him. More cards to draw? What? Oh, it's up there! <laughs> I didn't die! I found him. I found him, I found him. Yeah, Fatal Melting is actually gonna be a pretty important card for me to not eat, it looks like, as well. Am I gonna draw for this offering token? That's fine. This offering token will draw me both of those. Can I interact with this with the auto? No, I can't use the number keys on that. Hunt this bitch ass down, team. Oh, whoops. Hey. Oh, he must have had more health. Yeah. I know, I know. I know, I know. You don't have to tell me, I know. Doesn't make a lot of sense. None of this makes fucking sense, okay? Nothing makes sense. Bro, stop running. Coward. Sarah's running away from my totems. Get back here. Die like a man. To this totem. Fuck you, bitch. Oh, I think on the divinity, I can. I, I guess I can get there with fatal melting. It's just kind of awkward because of the spell shields that pop up randomly throughout the run. 
and, and the damage shields as well. Pretty confident I get there on turn one. Or I come pretty close at the very least. Daze's bitch ass. Oh yeah, I'm there. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and eat the dead weights. And then... Oh, these guys are gonna die unevenly here. Because I played them at the same health point. Which is okay. It's not the end of the world. I actually think you want to leave one in. Thinking about it a little bit. Pretty sure I leave one in. And then I go Offering Monument, Molded, Offering Monument. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm gonna lean back and we're gonna press 1, 2, 1, 2 for a while. Pardon me. Can't even can't do spacebar for that? That's a shame. So yeah, welcome back to another exciting installment of I'm doing an infinite an hour into a video. Hope you've been well. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot to tell you about today, to be honest. I... Yeah, been... Uh, I guess if you're wondering about the... I, I guess I can talk about the state of the Vampire Survivor speedruns, because that's something that's been... Uh, fun. 60... Hold on a second. Any, okay, it's, it's increasing. I thought it was increasing slowly. It's not. Uh, right now, it seems like I'm going to be taking a break from the Vampire Survivors All Achievement speedruns. The last patch they did increased the run duration by a significant amount. It's like an extra hour on top of what it was before. So, I'm not necessarily opposed to it, but it's just going to take more time. And, like, the problem is... It's really hard to optimize that speedrun right now, because I can look at it and then go, here's what I think is good, but then if I make a mistake, I will never see the back half of the speedrun, because it's just like, yeah, well, I may as well just can it. This is going to take forever, you know? And then by the time I start to get an idea of how you can optimize the run, a new update comes out and changes everything. It's fine. Like, again, I, I've said it many times. I believe wholeheartedly it's great for the game, that they're adding in these new achievements. For the average player, these achievements are cool. They give you a reason to play different characters on different maps. For me, it's a shame. But it's a shame I'm ready to be okay. I'm okay with it, ultimately. It's not a big deal. It's definitely good for the game in the long term, and we can always find other stuff to do with it if I want to. Anything else? Not really. Not really much else happening with me. I can actually pause this. I... I'm gonna be here for a while. I could... I've, I've actually thought about in positions like this, installing a mod that lets me, like, win runs or something, because this is a win. This is just tedium now. And... A classic game development uh, theory slash concept here is having to stop things like this from happening because sure this is not fun for the player right that's that's for sure i don't think you can really say anything to the contrary about that however in video games players will tend to optimize things to the point of killing the game for themselves i suppose is how i should put it and this is a great example of that right I'm here to win. How many reforms is that? Was that 200? I don't think that's 200, right? Three. They're gaining 15 per. That's 20? And yeah, it's 20. It's not 200. That would be ridiculous. 20. But yeah, I'm, I'm here to optimize regardless of circumstance. I'm going to do what's best. Even if it's unfun. I don't, I don't necessarily think it's unfun. It gives me time to bullshit. And it's pretty mindless. It brings me to a different topic, though, which I could talk about. So, this is, the, the basis for this topic is uh, TFT, Teamfight Tactics, because a pretty big-name player, his name is uh, K3Soju, who, if you follow the scene, he put out a Twitter post, or like a twit longer, actually, which outlined why he thinks the current set of TFT is in a bad state. 
And if I'll summarize it real quick, it's basically a bunch of balance stuff, and uh, like a, a few a few things that seem unbalanced. And he also mentions, and this is the thing that really piqued my interest. He mentions how uh, there are situations where you'll lose a game because you roll poor, right? Like, you'll have a bad augment roll on stage three, and you'll lose the game for it. And and even though, on, on average, like, that doesn't happen all that often, and it balances out because of variance, etc., etc., despite that, it still feels bad when it happens. And when I, when I read that post, I was like, huh, this sounds familiar to me as well. And that that familiarity is, of course, me and my feelings towards Monster Train, specifically a few certain cards. Randomness happens in a way that is unfun at times uh, for the player. How do you fight this problem? The answer is, mm, I'm not really sure. It's a hard problem to face, right? But I thought it was interesting as well because it's the sort of thing that, when I read through his post, it's the sort of thing that really you would only experience and recognize if you played an extremely long amount of time with the game, which, again, similarly, I have with Monster Train. I've put a 1,500 hours into this game, maybe more now. I don't really keep track. But in all of that time, when basically, what I think it means and what it, what it kind of made me realize is while randomness is unfun at times, like this ran these random effects that can happen, like Blink, they can make you go, man, this is a situation that really sucks. Because of the way that variance works and the way, it, like, it only starts to really wear you down at, after a really long time, I think. That's what I thought was interesting about it, is like... I, I don't... I, actually, no, I think I hated Plink from the start. I'm pretty sure that Plink is a bad example because uh, Plink, and I, this is this is a common, common sentence, common sentiment I feel I've given, Plink doesn't have a high end. Plink only has low ends. The high end of Plink is about as good as two torches, which is not something that makes you go, wow, oh my god, it's so crazy, it's so good, right? That's not something you get excited about, playing one energy for two torches. But then the low end is like, wow, I played a card that just randomly torched the frontline enemy, that really sucks, you know? That's the duality of Plink for you. I'm gonna do a little trick here. Because I, I'm, we're pretty close to being done, right? Actually, we are done. I'm gonna do a little, a little trick for you here. Check this out. You ready? And then we go down here and we mold again. No, this is bad. Never mind. I guess it's fine. It's fine. Uh, so the problem is, I win, but these offering money, I don't win now. I win in like two turns, right? Because I clear that wave out. The problem here is that these Offering Monuments are going to die, right? That's the problem here. So, what do you do about it? Well, really nothing, because I just played them both. What I do about it is I play Fatal Melting down here, and then I win next turn, and I can stop talking. I just, I think randomness is a really interesting concept that's, like, extremely hard to manage in a meaningful way. Especially in roguelikes, it's really difficult, because, uh, like, what, what do you do, man? What do you do? I really don't know. It's an important part. Like, it's important to have randomness in video games. It is, because it makes games, like, subsequent runs feel different, particularly in roguelikes. But in a long-term setting, the randomness can become frustrating. So how do you keep the balance? How do you make something random without making it uh, upsetting? And the answer is it's hard, right? In a, in a lower level, something that I see a lot of people complain about at a, like a basic level with this game is steel shots. Whoops, I missed multi-strike, guess I lost the run. As you play for longer, you find ways around that, of course. You plan, you change your run. That's something that's not so bad, because you can plan and play around missing multi-strike. You go, okay, here's another idea I can go for if I don't see multi-strike, because it's not guaranteed, right? Not guaranteed. But... Plink is one where you can't really play around it, but you can. When you play Plink, you just have to assume that it's going to miss. I could talk forever about Plink. I'm not going to talk any longer. My throat hurts. It's a lot of, a lot of speaking today in today's episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.